going on? This is City Wrestling Radio, and this, well, this is our weekly Sunday Night Heat retro review show. Gotta get back in time. I'm your host. I'm Corey Smith. I'm hanging out today with my main roster mate, my time traveling com, com, compadre. There we go. We could say compadre, comrade, compatriot, uh, Commodore 64. Nonetheless, your actual name is Jose Oseguera. Yes, it is. How are you today? Are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing? And how is everybody out there doing? I'm doing great. It's another day of a uh, Sunday night heat review. You know, we're pulling double duty today. Right now is, uh, you know, we're the, you're watching this, the Sunday night heat review show. But later today, well, if you're watching this, if you're a diehard City Wrestling Radio fan, just like I assume you all are, you'll be watching this as soon as it's uploaded and waiting for our are kind of our anniversary show, so to speak, mm-hmm. uh, at the end of the day. Survivor Series 2020. Uh, it's the it's the pay per view that brought us all together. You could say it was the one time of the year where four uh, community college students got together to form a wrestling podcast, and then did it for three more years straight. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Uh, yeah, three hundred and I was at three hundred and ninety something episodes counting. Three ninety eight, I think. Three ninety nine. Is it? I yeah. lost count at two hundred. I had to look up. Two hundred fifty. I lost count. I had to look up, look it up today for a, uh, for a cover letter. Nonetheless, today later Survivor Series, we will be back reviewing that show because hey, um, it's our anniversary. Yeah, and I might do a costume change. We never know. Well, I'll definitely be changing clothes later. I'll probably. I'm. I'm gonna try to get the top hat and there you go. Mm-hmm. the suit, but I can't promise anything. Uh, anyways, we're not doing that here. We're doing Sunday Night Heat. Um, was it for the twenty second, right? November twenty second. Yep, eleven twenty two ninety eight. Uh, we're gonna go back in time, but before we do, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that thumbs up, thumbs up button down below. Uh, subscribe bells. Hit them all. Even if you want to hit the dislike button, just hit it because it uh, it shows it shows us what you uh, how how to improve the show. You know. Yeah, but remember when you dislike. Uh, double click. Oh, I yeah, double click. Well, you have to click the thumbs up. You have to like double click and then say yes. I thumbs up that I just thumbs down. There you go. So it just it all makes sense. Mm-hmm. Anyway, it's it's in the manual. We we lost it, but it's there. Follow us on uh, Instagram and Twitter and Facebook at City Wrestling Radio on Facebook and Instagram at CWR four one five. You could see it right down there. God, I gotta get this. Okay. It's down there. There. Check it out. Anyways, uh, let's get into it. Sunday Night Heat, 11 uh, First off, uh, what did you what did you think of this show? Uh, this show, it, it actually it, it felt a little weird. It felt like a huge commercial, a huge Raw commercial. I felt like this was the time where they were like, let's try this as a third hour of Raw. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because... Yeah. A lot of the storylines I felt like were just drawn on from a week prior, Monday Night Raw from the Monday prior, and Survivor Series 98, which was the week, like literally one week prior to this, yeah. uh, where The Rock became the WWE champion, for, or the WWF champion for the first time. The corporate champion. The, exactly. Joining forces with Vince McMahon, Shane McMahon, and the corporation. I don't know if they're... I mean, I guess they keep calling everyone like the corporate champion of this, but I don't think they're calling themselves yeah. the corporation yet. No, they're not officially the corporation, but, you know, the the corporate IC champion, the corporate world champion. Yeah. You know. And even if you notice, Vince McMahon still isn't coming down to no chance in hell, but he is he telling gets... Austin he has no chance in hell. So I mm-hmm. think the song's coming in like a week or two. Yeah, someone, someone is figuring it out right now. Yeah. Ooh, what a great idea. Let's loop it. Yeah, exactly. Ah, I want you. I just want to. Uh, it was actually a pretty good. I, I do love that song. Mm-hmm. I don't think I've ever seen Vince live. I don't know. Maybe I. Yeah. Have you ever been to a show where he came out? Or yeah, yeah. Okay. I I can't remember. Maybe I did. I don't know. Uh, anyways, we kick off the show with a recap of Raw. Uh, Austin being screwed out of the WWF Championship not once on Survivor Series, but on by Shane McMahon. But mm-hmm. twice on Raw by uh, with Ken Shamrock and The Undertaker aiding the, the Rock for the win on Monday Night Raw. The Undertaker actually whacking him in the head with a shovel. <clears throat> so 
it, 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 you know, it's funny because later it, they'll talk about this a little bit more later. Mm-hmm. It's just like they're building up to Austin Rock. I mean, there's no doubt about it. At WrestleMania, you know, he is going to be led into the Royal Rumble, and we all know how it goes. But I mean, I do like the it, it's. <laughs> I like the storyline, but then again, there's just some parts that just feel dragged out, you know? Yeah. Like, they're... I don't know. I'll get into it a little bit. Well, a lot of it was dragged out back then because they did book the show months and months in advance, and um, they only had one one real show during the week, and then you have heat to recap everything. But, you know, it's... Being that Raw was by itself, that's a major reason why this is dragged out a lot. Uh, so Michael Cole and Jim Ross are on commentary. Um, I guess uh, that's it with Cornette, right? Uh, is it? I mean, I I would I would assume so. I mean, not <laughs> not in terms of the grand scheme of things in wrestling. <laughs> he, he will peek his head in yeah. here and there. Um, but no, I mean, as a commentator on Sunday Night Heat, I, I this might be it. Well, let's stay tuned. Because I remember sense. like Michael Cole and Jim Ross being kind of like the voices, the voice of Sunday Night Heat. So Jim Ross is pulling in double duty, OT? Well, I think what it was is that they were trying to groom Michael Cole into the, into the, well. The, the. I I, I, I think that's what they're trying to do here. I, I don't yeah. know if it's going to play out in the future, but uh, he might stick around for just a little bit. Uh, so the corporation comes out to the ring uh, with the corporate champion being uh, spotlighted in the middle. Uh, Vince takes the mic and he says, I resent the fact that a lot of you, and he points to the fans, have said that if The Undertaker didn't in- get involved in the WWF championship match on Raw, that Stone Cold Steve Austin would have beaten The Rock. The Rock was just warming up. To show that uh, what a fighting champion he is, The Rock has decided to defend his title at the next WWF pay-per-view, appropriately titled Rock Bottom. Whoa, the he'll, brain trust to think of that. He'll uh, he'll defend his WWF championship against mankind. The Rock isn't hiding from anybody. Nah, uh I do love that. The Vince throws it in there. He's like, he's not hiding from anyone. Nah, uh I'm like, okay, Vince, let's, let's not get too sassy here. He <laughs> says, as far as Stone Cold Steve Austin is concerned, Austin, there is no chance in hell you'll ever be the WWE champion. However, (laughs) The Undertaker gave me an idea. I consider myself a sport, a pretty good sport. So at January's pay-per-view, the Royal Rumble, you will be one of the 30 participants to qualify. You will be one of the 30 participants if you qualify. Like, okay, so he's going to be in it, but if he qualifies, okay, okay, give it a chance to qualify. At the next pay-per-view, next pay-per-view, you have to defeat The Undertaker in a Buried Alive match. Another issue I want to address is that the WWE fans think I have too much power. So, Commissioner Slaughter, sorry, I wrote every word of this down, has, <laughs> decided, that way. has decided to step aside. <laughs> and on Raw, he'll hire a third-party independent commissioner to balance the power here in what? WWF. I, yeah, I don't understand the purpose of that. So... I think what he's trying to say is like he's going to hire somebody who isn't working for him. Yeah. But at the end of the day, like, isn't it Shawn Michaels? Yeah. Yeah. It's Shawn Michaels. So Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) that dude was like the corporate GM. Like, do you know the first artificial, I mean, artificial, the first official uh, ruling or matchmaking that Shawn Michaels did? on raw sable and deborah mcmichael good guess (laughs) no he gave uh x-pac a shot at the title at the wwf title yeah so yeah maybe they were like oh where does allegiance lie is it with dx or was it with the corporation here i'm like like that i feel like that whole thing well we'll, i guess we'll watch it some more the next coming weeks yeah we'll get a recap next week but um yeah uh, and then we get some breaking news in 1998. Stone Cold Steve Austin, he's uh, he's blacked out in San Jose. Uh, you know what's the trip? Is they pulled double duty? What was what was this show at? Do you remember? Fuck, I don't remember. <laughs> I yeah, don't. we should have did more research on that. But they pulled double duty because Stone Cold hurt himself. He passed out. He blacked out. 
in San Jose. Yeah, in the Bay Area. Where are they at? In Oakland? Are they in San Francisco? No, doubt it. Well, they were... Uh... Oh, you mean uh, Sunday Night Heat? Yeah, so they pulled, the, you know, of course, according to... Because Sunday Damn Night Heat's supposed to be live. I literally pulled up this, like... I was, like, trying to find it, and I'm like, oh, this is some review, and it says, taped wherever Raw was taped the next night. <laughs> Thanks, uh, blog Scott's blog of doom for the fucking great information. Yeah, that's you know going above and beyond. Good work. Uh, uh, anyways, yeah. So, so yeah, double duty. They're, they're telling the story that you know earlier today we had uh, a show somewhere else, and Stone Cold instead of a house being show. live, yeah, instead of being live on Heat on TV, he chose the house show. So people come to the house shows. First off, Austin's gimmick is he gets drunk. How many times has he fucking blacked out? Like oh, hundreds. Honestly, I'll, I'll get there. I'll talk about it later because yeah. it, it, it continues throughout the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, then we have uh, too much versus the young. Bu- I'm sorry, the Hardy Boys, the the, the Omega Hardys, the, the the Omega Bucks. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Did young you see that Omega sign on their on their butts. Sh- it, it's been for the past like three or four weeks, I think. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So uh, Lawler is disgusted. By Scott Taylor's love for his best friend Brian Christopher, I he, he like he literally points it out in the beginning. He's like, because uh, Scott Taylor gets on the mic, he goes, "Brian Christopher, I love you, man." They hug, mm. you, similar to the best friend spot nowadays. They're the original best friends, yeah. yeah. Uh, but you can hear uh, Jerry Lawler just go, "Ugh, ugh." <laughs> it's like, come on, man. They're just like two bros. They're best friends, you know, they traveling together. Where, yeah. Probably, you know, slay in Las Vegas, just like the inner circle. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Uh, then Don Callis, uh, the Jackal, is uh, creeping ringside. He's supposed to be on commentary, but I feel like something happened with his headset or something because he was like only talk. He only talked for about a second. Yeah. And the, uh, well, I mean, with the match, it only had like two punches. Yeah. Uh, too much takes it to the Hardy Swanton bomb to Taylor. Uh, this is before that was Jeff's finisher. Uh, double sit down power bomb to Jeff. Uh, then uh, Jackal gets on commentary and introduces these are my acolytes. And that's when Farouk and Branshaw run to the ring. Double DQ. They take everyone out. The acolytes debut establishing establishing themselves uh, was the sole purpose of this match. And mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know. It's cool. I uh, I like the acolytes. Oh, well, I did when I was younger. Now, thinking about it, Branshaw's kind of a dick and I don't really like that i don't want to support like dickishness but farouk Mm -hmm. always always seemed like a stand-up guy you know what i mean everything i've heard about ron simmons has always been pretty it wasn't he wcw's first uh black world champion i believe so if Mm. he was definitely wcw champion i don't I, i believe i believe he was the first can't say for sure you know i don't want like a wrestling historian be like well you don't know what you're talking about there yeah, no, we don't want to. We don't want to come off like uh, what's the guy you talked about earlier? Cornette. <laughs> that the little Google you did the oh, Google search. Uh, Scott's blog of doom. If you want, yeah, we don't want to be another Scott's blog of doom. No, God, we're we're, we're we're taking shots, man. We're gonna have to get in a rivalry with Scott. Uh, Acolytes beat down on everyone. A jackals. <laughs> the jackal then is on commentary. He goes, violence for the sake of violence, gets me off. Ew, like, dude, it's Sunday. It's only eight o'clock. South Park is like, on yet. all right, that's that's cool, Don. Like, can yeah. you go to the bed? Hey, he's all creepy too, because he's like this. If you don't remember the jackal, like he was like thin, tall. He had like every he had like ten coke nails, and he had like a pentagram around mm-hmm. his neck. Mm-hmm. Like, it, like I feel like he just has like jars of blood at his house, or at least the character he, does. The jackal does. He was a satanic. Um, Terry from Karate Kid Three. Do you remember that guy? No. The Cobra Kai guy. No. Karate Kid Three. No. No. I didn't, okay. I don't think I saw Karate Kid Three. Identical twins. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. No. But so. He's a devil worshipper. Uh, Cole and Jr. get on the phone with the C- with the ever so famous senior WWF official, mm-hmm. Jack Lanza. What? Who? The, the senior WWF official, Jack Lanza. Uh, so he's like, uh, I love that. Although I will give it to Jack. He does sound legit. Like, uh, Hey guys. Yeah. Um, Austin, he's like he's suffering dizziness and headaches all week. Um, mm-hmm. they, they're, and they're, they're building. I mean, he sounds natural on the phone. Like he's just like an old man. 
You can yeah, tell. Yeah. You can tell in his voice. He's like sixty. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? I don't know who the fuck Jack Lance is. I'm gonna look him up right now, real trick. But no, he's trying to give an update on Austin. He doesn't really say much, except that no, he's he, been dizzy. He does confirm a concussion. Does he in the first part or in the second part? Oh, maybe the second part. I think it's the second part. He he, he did call in to confirm what was not known as CTE damage back then. But yeah, he's definitely CTE right now. I wonder if you know. I'm just gonna put this out there. Go for it. Uh, oh, that's John. Well, John Lanza was a professional. It was Blackjack Lanza. Anyways, um, I wonder if like okay, now with more studies being prominent, I wonder if anyone's gonna ever go back and be like, "You said in storyline I had a concussion. How are mm-hmm. you saying I didn't have a concussion when you said right there I had a concussion?" Like, yeah, I know it's storyline, but like at the same time, if Aust- it's you know if Austin ever comes out yeah. and was like, "Hey." I'm fucked because I had a bunch of concussions and there was a storyline building my concussion and I had a concussion around that time. Mm-hmm. That's evidence right there. You yeah. I mean? it, the steel chair to my face, that's also evidence. In this case, a shovel. Yeah, a shovel to his face. So, I don't know. I could find John Lanza. Maybe that's his brother. I don't know, man. Uh, he was trained by Vern Gagne. Vern Gagne. All right. Talk about Jack Tunney. Is that his name? Jack Tunney? Jack Tunney. Jack Tunney was the former president of WWF. The old school. I remember that guy. He, said, he played the part he says, so well. Ted DiBiase, we do not buy championships here. <laughs> I don't know why I make him sound like Richard Nixon. We do not buy championships <laughs> here. Uh, oh, and then the, what the fuck is this? Okay, so next up, we have the, website, the, guys. the Totally Twisted Game Center. Whoa. Okay, so this is a, this is a segment. This is a commercial for a toy. In 1998, that I think during the time they were like, ah, let's put it during the show. It'll it'll fill time, you know, but then it actually became part of the show. Like they couldn't cut it, which I don't. How could they have not have cut this out for the network version? Yeah, you would think. Uh, I don't know. Like, OK, so this is like I said, it was a toy. It's like a game. It was like Twister, but the reverse of Twister. So Twister, <laughs> you get on the mat and you, you know, stretch around and try to hit, touch all the things, the dots. With this, yeah. it was a box, and you had to like put your elbow on this, and then somebody else put their chin on it, and then somebody else puts their like you know stinky toe on it or something like that, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, <clears throat> totally twister, pass it. And it was like a bunch of there people. Was... That, Michael Cole was there, and yes. and Jerry and Lawler. Lawler. Jerry Jerry mm-hmm. Lawler swears to God he's really good at this game. He's like, I'm oh, really good <laughs> at th- oh, that's Cornette again. But Cornette, get out of my head. Uh, but no, Jerry Lawler is just like. Like playing this Twister game, yeah, with like some uh, internet guy. Why was some this? guy that works at WWE.com or WWF.com? Sorry, uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it was strange that it didn't get cut out of the network. You think if you can, um, if you can blur out microphones, you can do something about this. You can blur out microphones. They blurred out signs. They change the fucking mm-hmm. oddities music every single week, but they leave it every this. single week. Like, ah, oh, ah. Oh. All right. Uh, next up, we have the Stooges. They're trying to make McMahon happy. Uh, they inform oh, McMahon about Austin, but uh, he, uh, McMahon is Mr. Just, McMahon. Mr. McMahon. McMahon. I got some great news uh, for you, Austin. Mr. He's got he's got a concussion, Mr. McMahon. How does the audience know this? You know, three segments ago, but McMahon doesn't know it yet. He has to be told by the Stooges. I don't even think the people in the audience really did know. Like we knew at home. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, you know, I don't know. Like that that was Mr. McMahon. Mr. McMahon. And that smile on his face. I got news for you. Yeah, so he informs him Austin's injured and then um uh, uh, McMahon's not really thrilled. He's just kind of like, "What?" <sighs> uh, I thought he'd be happier by that. He has boss man kick him everyone out. Mm-hmm. And yeah, and it was what it was, you know. Yeah, yeah. What are you going to do? Uh, then we have Gen Grill versus Al Snow. Uh, Al Snow takes the Gen Grill with a series of headbutts and strikes back and forth between the two men. An elevated DDT to Snow, and Holly pulls Gen Grill to the outside. Brood and Job Squad brawl. Snow plowed a Gen Grill while the ref is distracted. Edge gives Snow a missile drop kick, and then Scorpio gives Edge a missile drop kick. The ref Tim White just calls for the bell. Ooh. You know what's a trip is when I first saw this in 98, I remember specifically loving the job squad 
Well, in 2020, <laughs> you're like, brood, uh, brood, I'm going for it. Brood. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Oh, yeah. Dude. Oh, man. The job squad, they all, they're, they're literally like, if it, if it wasn't for the 90s, like the late 90s, mm-hmm. they would have, no, they wouldn't have had a place. The job squad, I mean. Like, they're totally cartoon characters, right? Well, what it is is like they're like, they're playing into that like outcast. Like, we are the outcast, but we're going to be yeah. in. Like even Al Snow, he has a very like <laughs> Lollapalooza vibe about him. <laughs> yeah. You know, where he's like you know he does a thing where he comes something where he like bounces back and forth. Kind of mm-hmm. looks like he's moshing a little bit. Yeah. Like he looks like you can get some good LSD from him. Like I hundred percent. Like yeah. maybe that's what it is. Maybe everyone's just tripping on uh on, on some stamps. I don't know. Yeah, Whenever they put that hardcore stuff on there. Holly tripping balls. No. That guy <laughs> He would just be standing there in a cor- like I'm just thinking a lot. Mm-hmm. Stop looking at me. Oh. Stop staring. Okay. Uh, and then they're really building between the JOB squad versus the Brood. A feud I don't remember, but I'm sure it's just going to be one match on Raw. And there you go. Yeah, move on. Oh, and then, uh, Jesus Christ. Ah, uh, jeez, yeah. Hawks suicide attempt mm-hmm. on a uh, uh, recap from Raw. Damn, Jerome. Now, I definitely remember that on Raw. Like, mm-hmm. I that was something I've always remembered. I, I even remember it. Like, they always zoom in on, like, Jaws. Was Jaws the one to push him or did? Now, they aren't into the point where did Jaws push him. I don't think they're really asking that question yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the whole angle of, you know, Hawk, he was an alcoholic. He lost his place in the LOD. He, he wanted to commit suicide, so he climbed up to the top of the Titan Tron and draws followed and draws pushed him off. I mean, it's, it's yeah. pretty apparent. Yeah. There, there's yeah. no like, did he, or didn't No, he grabbed him and pushed him. <laughs> yeah, no, he was steps away. I'm not laughing at, I'm just laughing at the obscene, the, uh, you know, people think that. Uh, yeah. The idea, dude, it, it was line. one loud crack away from being a, you know, a, a chop to the chest. Yeah. Uh, it was almost a chop. So LOD is uh, LOD 2000 is with uh, Kevin Kelly backstage and uh, he, he they start trying to talk. Kevin Kelly tries to talk to Animal and then draws who is wearing Hawk's makeup, mm-hmm. uh, takes the microphone. Uh, he says dwelling on the past is something the old LOD would do. But animals and draws are the future and we're looking towards the future. We're gonna uh, we're gonna put you in a processor, hit puree, and make sloppy dripping goo out of you. All right, kid. Here's what we want you to do. See, you pu- you put in your most lame hawk impression and say this line, and we're gonna get some heat off of this. Now that's what Mr. Heat. McMahon would like. And but no, here's the thing: animal is starting to see. Animal starting to see through this shit. You know, animal yeah. starting to see through the. Uh, the blatant, obvious, he, you know, draws is trying to replace uh, Hawk. Yeah, he did the Larry David squint like, hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What's your agenda, kid? So, and I think, doesn't it lead to like, dr- was like draws like, he was like Hawk's like dealer, right? Like he was like his was like, he? pusher. I, I don't remember how it ended. I just remember it was cringe. Yeah. Uh, next up we have boss, big boss man versus the marvelous Mark Marrow. Marrow takes it to boss man until, uh, Jacqueline trips Marrow by accident. Dude, again, a three punch fucking sequence. Yeah, it really was like three punches. He runs the rope. Jacqueline trips Marrow, uh, belly to belly side slam to Marrow by boss man. We actually Done. get a finish. Yeah. Mo- yeah. So I think this is the one, maybe, maybe, yeah, this is the one actual finish we have on the show. Mm-hmm. So, yay! <laughs> yeah, and then we get a confrontation with uh, Mark and Jackie in the middle of the ring. What yeah. is this about? So after the match, uh, Mark Marrow has a mic. He says, "I brought you in to take care of Sable, and uh, it looks like Sable's taking care of you. You've what? become what? a thorn in my side. This is the last time you'll ruin a match for me. Say goodbye to the marvelous one." And then Marrow flips the mic and walk off, walks off. Now. I think, don't don't quote me on this, but I think this is the end of Mark Marrow and WWF. I think so, yeah. That, and that's what it seems like the, to me. In the beginnings of PMS, right? 
No, because no, what was it? Ja- I mean, I mean, I know Jacqueline. It was Jacqueline Terry, and was it Sean Stasiak? I believe so, right? No, because it was meat. They called him meat, right? Meats. That's yeah, right. It was Sean yeah, Stasiak. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, uh, it might be. I mean, I know eventually that's where Jacqueline's headed. Mm-hmm. Is to the group to join the group or to form the yeah. group EMS. Um, but yeah, it sucks because Mark Marrow is really good. Like Mark Marrow is great, dude. I so, love watching Marrow. Like he's yeah, athletic. He's a, he's a great uh-huh. wrestler. He's super competent in the ring. And there's no way to like, you can say that he wasn't wasn't a good wrestler. You know, yeah, and he's a decent talker for the time. You know, I mean, he's yeah. better than half of these schlubs. I'm sorry, not schlub. You know, well, I know what you mean because I feel like in today's age, like, yeah, the boxer gimmick is a little, yeah. Mm-hmm. But he kind of shed it. He just wore the the the, uh, the shorts. Yeah. And I do always love when he gets up to the top rope, he like pulls the shorts like all the way, like under his <laughs> yeah. nipples. They're literally yeah, yeah. like right above his nipples. They're like, and he mm-hmm. goes for the elbow drop. So I always like that. Uh, next up, we have uh, Mankind. He's just walking backstage, talking to himself. Uh, and after that, we have the WWF rewrite. Uh, well, for okay, sorry, let me rephrase all this. So uh, mm-hmm. Mankind's walking backstage, and they do a recap of what happened at Survivor Series. Right. They're like, this is what happened. He got screwed. The McMahons and The Rock, they are one unit. If you didn't get that from the beginning of the show, here you go. Yeah. And then the WWF Rewind. Rewind. God, I can't say that word for some reason. Uh, it brought to you by Glover on N64. <laughs> Guys, go by Glover on the N64. And uh, do you remember that game? God. I, I I don't I, I re- I vaguely I vaguely remember it. But I didn't play I, I, it, but I remember it. You know what I mean? Like I mm-hmm. remember hearing about it. Mm-hmm. Um, so then their rewind of the week is literally the same thing. They just recapped. They're yeah, like, yeah. oh, they, mankind getting kicked out. I'm like, and you know that happens more often than not. What that they just that that they do the they do a recap go to break then come back and this week the mcdonald's recap the rewind it's usually like the lugs boot of the week they need the rewind stuff too but Mm -hmm. i always love when it's like the boot of the week the boot of the week brought to you by lugs and it's just someone getting thrown out of the ring like that's not a boot yeah sorry very very similar to did you know sorry lugs it's not a boot (laughs) i always thought that they should have been able to pick those you know what i mean like Mm -hmm. i feel like if it was like this is the punch of the week brought to you by City Wrestling Radio. I should pick the punch. I'm like, well, yeah. I'm like, Lana did have a really good one punch to, I don't know, uh, what's her name? But you know what, you know what it, it, it really was, though, is the one segment that they wanted to push highly, yeah. and somebody did like a super kick, they'd be like, the boot of the week. The boot of the week. If, if someone did like an uppercut, it's the Carmella. uppercut of the week. It's Carmella doing the super kick. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so after that, we the, have the 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 tap out moment of the week. But they always got it wrong, though. Like they, it would be like the tap out moment of the week, and it'd be a kick. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it yeah. would the punch of the week, and it would be a flip. I'm like, that's not a punch. No, Stop no. it. So. Uh, next up, we have Mankind. He's coming to the ring. The hardcore champion, Mankind. He comes to the ring with a leaf blower. And those <clears throat> fancy slippers. Yeah, your favorite slippers, actually. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's been a while. He says, "He says it's been a while since I voiced my opinion, and I want to talk about family, about the breakup, and about the breakup of that family. He says, um, Mankind holds up the leaf blower. He says, Vince, Dad. This could have been yours. This, Dude, in like eight months. He, yeah. He says, this is going to be your gift for Father's Day. I'm like, Father's Day, is, Father's Day isn't until uh, June, right? Yeah. Yeah. Or it's November, bro. <clears throat> and uh, But I do love how Mankind is just so like, he goes, because he has nothing. You know, he has nothing he can use against Vince. Mm-hmm. Except for, you know, this leaf blower, it could have been yours. Now, when you're the laughing stuff. Laughing, laughing stock of Greenwich, Connecticut, and I have all those dead leaves on your lawn that you can't blow. <laughs> he says, he says, you'll you'll be thinking of me. Don't blame me. And I was like, that's pretty good. The fact that he has nothing, 
but he, he, he constructed this like, we are going to have leaves on your lawn, buddy. Oh, and it's going to cause damage. Exactly. He says, at this, uh, he goes, at this point, I'm divorcing my family. I can forgive you for a lot of things, Vince, but I will never, ever forgive you for making me wear these damn slippers. And he takes, <laughs> I love how he takes the slippers off and he throws them into the crowd and he throws one, one side and he throws one towards the hard cam. The second shoe like flew way too off to the side. And you could see some guy like trying to jump over the, um, really? the yellow, the yellow tape. Like he's uh, about to jump into the camera area <laughs> just to get the slipper. I want one of bro. those. I want one of those slippers. If, if somebody has the authentic slipper and is, a uh, <laughs> is if, so, if somebody was one of those people to catch those slippers, hit us up and we will interview, interview. Cause I want to know all about that slipper. Yeah. We invite you, you onto the that, show. You know, that's a, you know, you know that, that dude's wife is like, why do you have just one slipper? It doesn't match anything. Oh, in that's, that thing was guaranteed thrown out. Oh yeah. Come on. Like, even if I was a kid, like at that point in my life, like if I caught it nowadays, I would have been like, "No, mm-hmm. fuck that! I'm I'm gonna frame this shit. I'm a 33 year old Mark, you know. <laughs> what else am I gonna do with it?" But no, I think with the 90s, it's been 22 years. Oh, slippers are molded, like under you know he somebody left them at their mom's house. That you know, mm-hmm. then they move, but they left as nonetheless. I said it's in someone's attic, just collecting dust. Either that or. It's at like the WWF Hall of Fame in a, in a glass box. Well, you know the um, not the Hall of Fame, but um, they have a museum. It it's not really a museum, but it's like everything's like put away. But it's all the stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah it's yeah. not it's not like a walkable museum where you can go it's in. It's like and, their warehouse. Well, no, you pre COVID, you could uh, apply to take tours. You could uh, oh, okay. You could get a tour. Uh, but the, like, ooh, the Hulk Hogan cage. Ooh, the first barbed wire cage. Yeah, yeah, the part of the fist from SmackDown. I remember mm-hmm. that was the big thing they would talk about. Yeah, uh, they would have all like the they they had like ring mats from WrestleMania one in there. Pre- actually, a pretty good place. I would actually love to go in there one day. Um, but yeah, no, you're right. There's probably something like that in there. Mm-hmm. Um, outcome Vince and Shane McMahon. Um, he says, or I think it was Vince. He says. Uh, I, I, I want you to believe this. He goes, you're the living, breathing example, Mick, that you can't shine shit. Damn. It's Sunday, y'all. Wow. Like, <laughs> I, I, that lit, I was watching it. I was like, oh, my God. Yeah. That is fucking, that's, that's rude. <laughs> that's just yeah. straight up rude. Uh, he says, on uh, the next night on Raw, uh, Mick, he goes, uh, you will be defending the hardcore championship against two men. Against Shamrock and the Big Boss Man. Oh, and just one more thing. Have a nice day. So, can you imagine Shamrock carrying the IC title and the Hardcore title? No. No. Well, Jesus. Did Shamrock? I mean, I'm sure Shamrock eventually became Hardcore Champion once, at least. Sure, but didn't it already happen? No, no. The twenty, the that's there is no Mick. Oh yeah, no. Mick is, is the first the champion. inaugural champion. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Right. So mm-hmm. it's just, I don't know, man. We'll see. I mean, I I think mankind gets out of it. It's a hardcore title match, so yeah, he'll yeah. probably get. It doesn't actually become a twenty four seven title until uh, Crash Holly wins it. Hmm. Because remember, he was the one that says, "I'll defend this title anytime, anytime anywhere, anywhere." You mm-hmm. know, so come at me, bro. Uh, then we get, uh, you, you, well, actually, oh, no, the second match with an actual finish of the night, Jeff Jarrett versus Kurgan. Such a strange, strange. Pain. Well, and they're, they're really doing Jeff Jarrett dir- dirty. I can see why he left, dude. But like, no, he's no. been stuck with his odd odd of these program for forever. Yeah. Um, the oddities are like, whatever, we'll go out and we'll grab TV time. Jeff Jarrett wants he wants to be in the title contention, at least mm-hmm. not, maybe not for the WWE title intercontinental, but no, he is a side note mm-hmm. in this whole thing right here, because this match is not designed to get Kurgan over. It's not designed to get Jeff Jarrett over hell. It's not even designed to get any other member of the oddities over, you know, who, who was benefiting the most out of this match Fucking Sable. No, who? Pacific Blue, ladies and gentlemen, coming up right after Heat. And then you have an episode of uh, 
Silk Stockings. Silk Stockings, then La Femme Nikita. I will say this, uh, JR, this week. Uh, Silk Stockings gets on with, with Jack and Sandy, those two crazy kids. <laughs> like, oh, JR, you were even old back in the day. Uh, but this whole thing, everybody, yeah. the oddities, Jeff Jarrett, fucking, are all a side note just to get a match or a feud going between Deborah McMichael mm-hmm. and, uh, Non-wrestler. and Sable. Who mm-hmm. was who was a non wrestler, but is yeah. now the WWF Women's Champion. Understandably, I I what understandably, I, I, and I understand why she's the the Women's Champion. Yeah, I mean, I get it. She's hot. I mean, in the nineties, yeah. she's no she's no Tori Wilson. She's no Kimberly Page. No, 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 no. She's no Stacy Keebler, but she's a she's a good looking. So, so some people who grew up in Saskatchewan or wherever or Minnesota and wherever the fuck Brock's from. Brock thought she was hot and married her. So Minnesota, he's, I think I think he lives in Saskatchewan now. That's what it is. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, so oh Jeff Jarrett, um, he uh, Deborah distracts Kurgan or Deborah distracts Kurgan. Refs distracted by the oddities brawling on the outside, and uh, Kurgan. And Deborah's a great the- valet. Yeah, don't she's get me great. wrong. She's yeah. great. She does her job tremendously. She's uh she's a very uh quiet Sherry Martel. She's good. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. Sherry Martel was very loud. Very subdued Sherry Martel. Very subdued compared yeah. to Sherry. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, so uh Jeff Jarrett then gets the guitar shot on Kurgan, the pin, win. Go, Jeff Jarrett. And he's just like, All right, let's get out of here. Deborah's like, oh, yeah. no, fucking okay. Strange. <laughs> Jared's like, uh, Jeff Jared's like, I'm going to introduce you to my friend Steve Austin in a minute. <laughs> He's a really nice guy. I think you'll like him. <laughs> Guess what? <laughs> Kevin Kelly, he's backstage with uh, the fucking 90s favorite porn star wrestler, Val Venus. He, he says words. Okay. He, uh, he says, ah. he says, tonight, <laughs> he'll be my first time <laughs> facing Shamrock for, uh, for the the IC title. He goes, it reminds me of a lot of other people's first times that I've had. I've been there with for he goes, Shamrock. I'll leave you hurt, confused, and you won't know what hit you when the big Val Boski comes on top. So he yeah. basically insinuated that a lot of other people's first time uh, with Val Venus, uh, they don't, they didn't know what was coming. They were hurt and they were mm-hmm. confused. Oh my God, he's a rapist, and he left splooge all over them. I was like, dude, well, he, he, he unprotected. Uh, well, he, he's out of a sectamine. Right? Oh yeah, you're right. <laughs> there you go. Just like you're Kevin right. Kelly. Oh, okay, yeah, <laughs> that makes sense. But he still he's he has a vasectomy and he still practices the pull out method. Okay, I don't believe you, Val. Not for Something's one, not man. adding up here, Val. You wouldn't pull out if you had a vasectomy, okay? God. I mean, oh, like, my yeah. God. But luckily, we have a Lanza update. Uh, Jack, Lan- <laughs> Dude, Jack Lanza, he goes, yeah, well, uh, Austin, uh, yeah, he's blacked out. He's got a concussion. Uh, he's sleeping now. I don't know. <laughs> Should you not be sleeping when you have, when you have a concussion? <laughs> so, honestly, to me... Jack Lanza sounded like he was just out on the night on the town with Austin. And he's like, yeah, Austin, uh, he uh, blacked out. And uh, <laughs> yeah, he's uh, he's sleeping now. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's sleeping it off. I mean, he's sleeping. He's like, I'm really mad at the Undertaker. Grr, that Undertaker. Grr. Like, thank you, Jack Lanza. Uh, but yeah, to me, I was like, dude. Austin's been blacked out before. Mm-hmm. He's uh he's drinking a few beers. He It's a nice fresh rodeo. He'll be fine. Anyways, then we have uh VI Venus, according to my note. Val Venus versus the one and only, the corporate intercontinental champion, Mr. Ken Shamrock. Uh so I will say this. We have like four minutes left in the in the show. In the show, yes. The match starts out very good. Val Venus and Shamrock. They fucking kick it into third gear the second the match starts. There's no building up. A, there's to, four yeah. minutes left. Go out there, kick it in third gear. They start going back and forth. Spinebuster to Shamrock. Val Venus starts to taunt and punch Shamrock. 
a dragon uh dragon leg screw transition into an ankle lock for uh into Val Venus. And then out comes Mankind with the Leaf Blower. He uh, hits Shamrock with the Leaf Blower. And then that's it. There's a DQ on that. And then the Boss Man comes out, and the Boss Man and Shamrock beat down on Mankind. And then that's just it. Like, I mean, we got to go. I know, but like, why did they need to... What was the point of Val being in this match? You know what I mean? Why did Val get a title shot? Why were they building it past like Val's title shot? Because he's a heat staple, and they needed to put him on the show. He needed to do something. Can't have him in, in the locker room and not do nothing. Yeah, I man, I just I felt like they could have had a match, like a match here where it wasn't like just a, another DQ finish. Like it, it take Shamrock out of this match. Put fucking X Pac, have a European title match, have it be a great match. You know what I mean? Or mm-hmm. hell, make it Val Venus versus I don't know, give me someone else on the roster. A Thrasher. And they have a match number one contendership IC title you know what I mean yeah it, to me mankind could have beaten up on Shamrock backstage and then gotten beaten down by him and the boss man and that didn't need to end the show because to me that was just like okay we're gonna tune in to Ron about I bye yeah but you know that was that was what they did back then yeah they always ended the shows uh with what do you call it cliffhangers the cliffhanger stay tuned for tomorrow who knows what's going to happen? And you know what? They got me because I started watching Raw like an hour later. I'm like, oh, did you? <laughs> yeah. You're like, oh, I'm not watching that crap. Well, I'm, I'm just going to see what happens. Well, that's, I do remember Shawn Michaels came out. Maybe I should Oh, okay. Watch. So you did watch it. Okay. So <laughs> I watched that's what it was. It. That's what it was. I'm like, was, was it Shawn Michaels? And you're like, no, it definitely was Shawn Michaels. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so that was uh, Sunday Night Heat for from 11-22-1998. Yeah, all it's in a, all, it's a, it's a big recap of Survivor Series last week's Raw and a commercial for t- tomorrow. I feel like more and more the Sunday Night Heats are just being recaps of recaps. Yeah, yeah. I remember and the matches are getting shorter and shorter. And yeah, and two, two out of five finishes. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And I also, I remember a few times on Sunday Night Heat, and this is just my past recollection. There were some episodes that had no matches. Correct me if I'm wrong. Do you remember this? We haven't seen. We haven't had any yet. Well, not not here. God. And if there is, we're not. I'm not fucking doing a review show for that. Oh, uh, we have to <laughs> recap, recap, recap. <laughs> yeah. Um. It. I just. It, I think it's in the future. I think it's like the days when they're on MTV, mm-hmm. where they just didn't give a shit anymore about heat. They're like, oh well, it's making in some money, so. Might as well yeah, that, and I think that was done on purpose. I think they were like, um, MTV was like, WWF, just give us, just give us the soap opera. We don't care about the matches. Just give us the soap opera. That is very true. I could see, you know, you're like, we're we're just gonna put it on right before we put on Undressed. So, yeah, Cribs. Yeah. Uh, anyway, Undressed was the 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 stablehood to my puberty. <laughs> <laughs> it was like the MTV like soap opera. They're like blowjobs. What's that? Oh no! I you don't actually that. blow. <laughs> like that was the one line from that show. <laughs> I remember they were like blowjobs. Oh, How do you do that? And somebody was like, <laughs> <laughs> "No, don't do that." Ouch! Oh. Look at embolism. Oh, it was the greatest moment of my puberty. <laughs> Anyways, guys, if you stuck in this far, thank you. <laughs> Thank Cheers. you for that. Uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe at City Wrestling Radio on Facebook and Instagram at CWR415 on Twitter. Click the subscribe button down below, the thumbs up, the notify bell if you want to stay tuned for more City Wrestling Radio. We'll see you guys later. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye. Bye-bye.